And stay safe and we're going to go. Thanks, Caha. Well, I'm delighted to introduce our first guest on this evening's show. We're delighted to be joined by former chairperson of the St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee, Joe Mellet. Joe, you're very welcome to the show. I suppose you can start off by telling me a little bit about the history of the St. Patrick's Day Parade here in Swinford. Well, the Patrick's Day Parade dates from 1951. So that's 70 years, whether, whether we like it or not, 70 years. And uh, I remember the majority of them because it was the year I was born in 1951 there. And it, 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 from, from its infancy, it has developed into a superior and one of the better Patrick's Day parades in, in the west of Ireland, and certainly one of the bigger ones in, in rural Ireland. Uh, and I have been associated with it since probably about the, the 1970s or so there. Uh, I recently handed it over at, at, uh, because Cahill Kelly was looking for it. So I gave it, gave it, gave it to him there. He was anxious to, to develop it further there. So I wish him well in that respect there. But there has been, um, I mean, as regards the celebration of, of the National Day, and we call it St. Patrick's Day. I cringe when I hear people saying St. Pat's Day or shortened abbreviations of it and that. It's, it's a tremendous day where people come out and they, 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 they let their hair down, but they also participate in the parade. So we have marching bands, and we have every business that's, that's in any way associated with Swinford put in their, their floats there. We have the traditional, of course, St. Patrick, who, who has gone through a good few changes over the years there because, because of, 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 of death and things like that. But otherwise, it has been, it has been fantastic. And uh, it has been, um, I suppose, very nostalgic when people look back through, because we have old photographs of the original parade there. And it's, it's, it's fantastic. And it must be maintained. The St. Patrick's Day Parade obviously has been in Swinford now nearly 70 years. So that highlights that when a community comes together, they can achieve great things. It's kind of like a mehel type of thing there where the, 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 the Mila community or the midfield community or Kilasser, all the outlying areas there. And again, all the, the local the pubs and shops and all that type of thing. And it's, it's remember, uh, before the internet, it was a fantastic advertising uh, you know, part, part, it's part of, the, of, 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 of displaying your wares, if for nothing else there. Because remember, there are thousands of people on the street there. And it was an ideal opportunity that it has been, all right, the internet and that has surpassed that and, and, and replaced it. But it's still part of our culture, our, our heritage there. And I think both young and old look forward to it every year. People find it hard to believe, find it hard to believe that it's credible that you couldn't get a drink in, 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 in Ireland uh, up to 1961, which is, as the says, it's only 60 years ago there, but it is, it is in, the, in, the, in the very recent past there. And that was a, that was a huge, huge change because if you told uh, an Irishman today or indeed anybody associated with Ireland there, there was any connection there that you couldn't get a drink on St. Patrick's Day, he would look at you sideways. Joe, we're in the beautiful surrounds of Mellet's Emporium here in Swinford. Lots of history in this building. Lots of history, Tommy, there. And uh, something that I'm, I'm proud of. Uh, I was born upstairs as in early, just 70 years ago there, but I was the, the sixth generation, uh, continuous generation since Mellet's opened its doors in 1797 by a fellow called Stephen Mellet there. And there's been Stephen and Mickey and, and Michael and Joseph and, and Willie and Joseph and now Marie carries on the tradition and she, she is the seventh publican. I've packed it in after 50 years. Uh, I think it's time to let the, let's, let the new broom sweep, sweep clean there. But there's huge history here. Just where, where we actually sit at the moment would have been part of the original grocery shop, which, which we, we we've turned into, into a pub some years ago because of, of changing times. But if these walls could talk, they could tell many tales. I was reading an article recently, Joe, and it, it told the story of B and Mellet as a matchmaking, a place for matchmaking to take place. Oh, it was very, very uh, common or popular. I remember when we were very young there, uh, the, the, the room where it was done, whether it was the snug, but generally it was often done in the kitchen there, that the kitchen was out of bounds for the morning. And the... the um, the, the couple, 
along with their, their, both of their parents. So there would be the, the, four, the four parents in the couple, that, that six of them, uh, would be introduced by, by my mother and put into the room there with generally a bottle of whiskey and six glasses and told to sort it out, get the dowry sorted out and that. So that's a wonderful tradition there. And people still talk about it. People who actually got married because of the, the, the as the fellow says, the, the advances of, of, of my mother who recognised that he or she shouldn't be left on the shelf. So it's great, great, a bit, great bit of history. Joe, thanks for joining us this evening on our special show ahead of St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Well, we have a real treat for you now because you've heard of Mary Black and Frances Black, but I think you're going to hear the name Orla Connolly a lot more in the years to come. Here she is singing one of my favourite songs, The Night Visiting Song. I must away now I can no longer tarry this morning's tempest I have to cross I must be guided without a stumble Into the arms I love the most and when he came to his true love's dwelling, he knelt down gently upon a stone and through her window he whispered lowly is my true love within that home wake up wake up love it is thine own true lover wake up wake up love and let me in for I am tired and oh so weary And more than near drenched to the skin She raised her up, her down soft pillow she raised her up and she let him in and they were locked in each other's arms until that long night was past and gone and when that long night was past and over And when the small clouds began to grow He's taken her hand and they kissed and parted then he saddled and mounted and away did go I must away now I can no longer tarry This morning's tempest I have to cross I must be guided without a stumble into the arms I love the most.